This show is produced by the Harwood Podcast Network. Hey there, guys. I'm Cameron Harris. We love making this show available to you free of charge, and you can help us keep it that way by making a contribution to our Karma Jar. To learn more, visit our website. Hey there guys, and welcome to another episode of SketchUp, a 3D toolbox. Today, we're gonna be doing the doors and the windows for our Kawea Falls house project. I'm, I've been having such a good time with this project. I hope you guys are too. It's such a cool house to be working on. And today, we're gonna be adding the holes for the windows and the doors. Now, keep in mind, we're not gonna be actually adding the physical doors and windows. That's gonna be a completely different episode. We're just gonna be punching the holes in the walls to make room for them. The, the actual doors and windows are much more detailing, and it's best to do those later in the model rather than sooner. So as you can see, this is the way our model looks right now. Remember last episode, we were working on modifying some of the rooms and the position of some of the walls so that it looked more like it did in the photos rather than the floor plan, because we know the photos are correct. Floor plan, not so much. And the photos are gonna be playing a pretty big role in our project today as well, because windows, um, doorways are sometimes marked on floor plans, but not all of them, and windows aren't marked on this floor plan at all. So we're gonna be adding windows purely based off of the photos. So remember, go to our website and check out the link to the Kawea Falls Gallery, where you can check out all of these photos of both the inside and the exterior of the house. That's how we're gonna be checking where these windows are supposed to go and how big they are. So let's get to work on that. Now I'm actually gonna start over in this room over here where we have the offices uh, and the garage because that's a fairly simple room, nice place to start. So let's start out with, uh, let's punch some pretty big holes. Let's punch some holes for two garage doors, right? Because this is a double garage. So if we look here, they're gonna go on this wall right here. Now, when it comes to drawing doorways and windows, there are a bunch of different ways you can do it. I prefer the method where you use guidelines. So I'm gonna go ahead and extrude a guideline out from this side of the wall here. I'm gonna draw it out four feet. So this is where I want my garage door to start. Now, in the case of a garage door, we know that it goes all the way down to the floor. And remember, we have this line here. This line represents where our floor is. That's why I like having that line on the outside. It's very easy to figure out where things need to go. So right where that line right there and my guideline intersect, I'm going to switch to the rectangle tool. I'm going to draw a rectangle on this shape here. I want it to be eight feet wide and I want it to be seven feet tall. So I'm going to go ahead and type in eight feet by seven feet. Go. There we go. So there's my garage door right there. I'm going to use the push-pull tool and push it in until I get this look right here. And when I click, you can see, I can see right through the hole. So that's where my first garage door is gonna go. Let's do the same thing on the other side. Again, I just wanna take a guideline in four feet from this side here and draw a rectangle that will be eight feet by seven feet. There we go. Push it in, oh, not quite. You wanna push it in until you get this kind of weird looking thing right here. That means that when you click on it like so, it vanishes. So it basically cuts the hole for you. You don't have to get rid of any extra faces. So that's really nice. So we've got our two garage doors. That is excellent. Now, let's start working on some windows over in this wall here. This is where those windows are gonna go. These are in the office. They kind of overlook the rest of the house. First thing I'm going to do for windows, because we know that with doors, they go down to the very bottom of the floor. So we don't need to worry about where they start. We know they start right at floor level. Windows, we don't know. So we need to figure out how high they need to be positioned on the actual wall as well. So I'm going to use a guideline here, and I'm going to extrude it up three foot, six inches. So three and a half feet. That is the bottom edge of my windows. That's where they're going to go. We're then going to draw another guideline from the top wall down. With windows, you need more guidelines than doors because windows can come in all kinds of different shapes and sizes. So I want these windows to stop about one foot six from the top of my roof right here. So this is where my windows are going to go, right in this kind of corridor that I uh, made right here with the guidelines. So now I need to figure out where they're going to be positioned left and right. I'm gonna take these and I'm gonna take a four foot nine guideline from there 
And I'm going to do the same thing over here, because there's going to be two windows here, four foot nine. Now, they're going to be pretty big windows. They're going to be seven feet wide. So I'm going to take a seven foot guideline right there and another seven foot guideline out here. There we go. So you can see that my guidelines are all intersecting to make these two rectangles here. That's where my windows are going to go. So now it's very easy. I just use the rectangle tool, start at one corner, and go down to the other corner, and do the same thing over here. So I don't even have to worry about typing in any dimensions at this point. And now I just select the window and punch it through like that. Perfect. Now I've got this porch area right here. This is where my doorway the, uh, exits the offices and goes to the rest of the house is going to go. So for this, I don't need as many guidelines because doors really only come in a couple different sizes. And I like to use just a standard door size. And I know that the door goes down at the very bottom. So all I really need is one guideline for this. So let me show you how you can do that. Now the only guideline I need is from this wall right here. I'm going to extrude it out this way. I know I want it to be uh, one and a half feet, so one foot six, in. So that's where I want my right side of my door to be. And go down to where my guideline and my floor intersect, right there. I'm going to draw a rectangle up. And now I'm going to type in the dimensions of a standard door. Now there are a couple different standard door dimensions. Uh, the ones that I like to use are two foot eight wide, so two feet eight inches wide by six foot eight inch tall. There we go, and that is our doorway. So now I just use the push-pull tool, punch it in, and there's our standard doorway. Let's move on to the rest of the house. Now this is gonna get a little bit more uh, complicated and much more interesting. Let's start out with something that's pretty, uh, pretty cool. Th these two parts of the house over here, right? So we've got these two walls right here. Now if you look at the photo, you can see that they are covered in these really large windows. They give an excellent view uh, over, overlooking the river that the house is positioned next to. So what we're going to do is we're going to uh, we're going to draw those windows next. So let's start with this wall over here. Now one thing that we're, that's kind of interesting about working with this wall first is that the windows on this wall, as I mentioned, are huge. They are in fact seven feet and nine inches tall by my calculations. Now remember, our walls are only eight feet tall. That's standard height. But see, the thing is, if you look at the house, these walls that we're working with here are actually taller. These are 10 foot tall walls by my calculations, and the rest of the house uh, is eight feet. So the, wall, the uh, roof line actually kind of slants inward. So what we're going to do is, we're not gonna worry about the slanting roof line quite yet, because that's, roofing is gonna be a whole nother episode. Rather, what we're going to do is we're going to take uh, the, these walls right here and we're going to make them taller. So I'm gonna draw a quick line segment right here to kind of separate these walls, okay? So I'm gonna just take this, like this, and I'm going to draw these lines. That way, these chunks of the walls, I can, I can manipulate these and their height without affecting any of the other uh, walls in the house. The walls are already eight feet tall. We need them to be 10 feet tall. So I'm gonna add two feet to their height. There we go. So now, We've got some good sized walls to work with. Now we can add those really big windows. So first things first, let's draw our guidelines. These windows go almost all the way down to the floor, but not quite. They leave about three inches. So we're going to add a guideline from the floor up three inches, just like that. And the next guideline I'm going to do is from the left side of the wall, I want a nine inch gap before the windows start. Nine inches, just like that. Okay. Now. I could add a ton more guidelines and make a ton more of these windows, but I'm going to take a little bit of a shortcut here, actually. So I'm actually going to go ahead and draw my first window. So I'm going to switch to the rectangle tool, go down to where my guidelines intersect right here. I'm going to make a big window that's going to be 7 feet 9 inches tall by 3 foot 6 inches wide. All right there we go. So there's my first window. I'm not going to go ahead and start I mean, I could go ahead and just push pull this wall back and have a window, right? I could do that. But I would then need to do that a bunch more times for the rest of this wall. I'm going to undo that, and I'm going to take a little bit of a shortcut. So what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to draw one more 
guide line over here, and I'm going to extend it out nine inches, just like I did before. Now, if I take a look at my photo, I can calculate that there are a total of five windows on this wall, right? And they're evenly spaced out. Now, you might remember a few episodes back, we talked about the multiply and divide tools, which is a really easy way to duplicate something across a distance. And that's what we're going to do here. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to select this, this face, this chunk of where my window is. It's not a hole yet. It's just a kind of I've drawn where the hole is going to be. I'm just going to select that face. And then I'm going to switch to the Move tool. And hit the Option key, because I want to drag out a copy of it. Hit the Option key. And I'm going to grab it by its right corner down here. And now I'm dragging out, you can see, a copy of this window. And I'm going to drag it out here to that guideline right there. So now I've got these two divided out like this. Now, don't switch tools. Don't do anything else. Now we're going to divide that distance and essentially create a bunch more copies of these that are evenly spaced between. So Figuring out the number is a little bit weird. Basically, you figure, OK, I want five of these. I'm going to divide by four. You always divide by one less than the total number that you want. So to do that, I'm going to hit the slash key. So that's the divide by key. And I'm going to go divide by four and hit Enter. And you can see it went ahead and made perfectly spaced versions of my windows all across here. This is so fantastic. Now, I went a little bit faster than I normally would here. If you want to kind of get a refresher course as to how the multiply and divide functions work, go back to one of our previous episodes, and I go into a lot more detail about how these tools work there. But you'll see me do it a couple more times in this episode. So I'm going to go ahead and push these back like this. And now I've got these huge windows right here. This is fantastic, very quick. And I'm going to do a similar thing over on this wall here, but with slightly different measurements. In the case of these windows, they don't go all the way down to the floor. Instead, they actually go down one and a half feet from the floor. And in case you're wondering where I'm getting these dimensions from, I'm really just kind of looking at the photos that have all the windows in them. And I'm just kind of looking, and I'm kind of guessing, guesstimating, one might say. They're an educated, it's an educated guess. But it is a guess. So it's just kind of, it, I mean, it may, maybe it's one foot eight instead of one foot six. But the reality is that for this model, when it comes down to exact inches, that kind of accuracy isn't necessary. And when you're not actually at the house, it's impossible. So don't worry about that. Just look at it, give it your best guess, and just look at the model and see, does this look like it does in the photo? If it does, great, you're on the right track. So we've got our one foot six guideline right there. I'm going to take another guideline out from here, just like I did before. I'm going to do 9 inches and 9 inches, just like that. And now for the dimensions of these new windows. So these new windows, I'm going to switch to the rectangle tool and start drawing a rectangle down here. These new windows are 4 feet wide, so I'll go 4 feet by 6 and a half feet tall. So 6 foot 6, like this, and go. There we go. So now I've got my rectangle. I'm going to do just like I did on the other wall. I'm going to select it, use the Move tool, and drag a copy of it out over to the other side here. Now, in this case, we only have four of these windows, not five. So instead of dividing by four, I'll divide by three. So divide by three. There we go. And now I'll just take one of them, push it back in six inches. And there we go. So now you can see we've got these windows all across these walls here. This is looking really good. So now I'm going to switch from these walls here over to these walls. So now if I look at the photo for this section, I can tell that there are going to be, uh, there's going to be a door right here, and there's going to be three windows right here. So I'm going to take a guideline from this edge of the wall right here. I'm going to stretch it out to four feet. And this is where my door is going to start. So I'm going to go ahead and use my rectangle tool, and I'm going to draw a 2 foot 8 by 6 foot 8 rectangle right there. Same measurements I'm doing for all my doors. So I'm going to push that in. There we go. Perfect. Now I just need my windows over here. Now my windows, I'm going to draw a couple extra guidelines for. I'm going to take a guideline from the ground here, or the floor, take it up 2 foot 2 inches, and then I want them to have a little bit of space over here. So I'm going to actually add 
a nine inch gap between the door right, right there. And I'm also gonna add a one foot three inch gap on this wall right here. There we go, one foot three, perfect. So now I'm gonna start modeling the windows. Now the windows are actually a fairly simple dimension. They're only four feet wide and they're four and a half feet tall. So I'll type in four foot six by four feet. There we go. And you can see the top of the windows lines up perfectly with the top of our doorway here. And I'm going to do the same thing I did before. I'm going to take a copy of this window, go over here. And in this case, I'm just going to divide by two. There we go. So you can see dividing by two gave me three windows in total. Now you would think we would go ahead and push these back. But by looking at a photo, you can tell that we're going to have basically the same exact system down at this bottom floor here, right? So we're going to have a doorway and three windows of the same dimensions in the same positions, just on the bottom floor instead of the top floor. We've already done the top floor. There must be an easier way to do this. And there is. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go back in and redraw this line down at the bottom of my doorway here. And what that's going to do is that's going to basically bring the face back. So it's no longer a hole, it's actually plugged up. But that allows me to select this face right here. And I'm going to go ahead and select by shift clicking on all the other line segments here. Now I've got those faces all copied. Even though they're not actually connected, you can kind of select groups of these faces. And I'm going to go ahead and do Command C or Control C if you're on a PC to copy those. And then I'm going to get out of this group. And then I'm going to go into this group down here, double click on it so that I'm in the raw line and face mode. And now I'm going to paste. Now when I paste, you'll notice that I have the same shapes that were used to punch the holes in the top level. So what I'm going to do is first I'm going to look and see, OK, I'm grabbing it by the bottom left corner of the doorway. That's great. The guidelines that I drew are extending down to the bottom layer because the walls are in the exact same place. That's fantastic. So I'm going to go ahead and line up with the floor and that guideline right there. You see that? Right there click. Now, make sure you don't deselect anything yet, because you can see that the shapes are pointing out at a right angle from the wall. We don't want that. We want them to be lying flat up against the wall. And the way we're going to do that is with the rotation tool. So hit the Q key to switch to the rotation tool. And I'm going to go ahead and make sure I have my faces still selected here. And I'm going to select this bottom corner, make sure that you see not a red or a green circle like this. Make sure you see a blue circle. That means you're going to be rotating on the ground. And click once. Then I'm going to go over here and I'm going to click on the far edge of my shapes over here. And now I can rotate these on that pivot right there at that corner. So I'm going to go ahead and lie these flat up against my wall by just snapping to this corner down here click. And then when you do that, you see those have now divided my wall up. Now, this requires a little bit extra work because of the whole rotation thing, but it's way less work than having to redraw all of these things by hand. So that is really nice. So now I can just go ahead and push pull these things all the way back like this, and then do the same thing on the top here. And I got an extra face in the doorway because I redrew that line and created the face again. So I just select it and delete it like that. There we go. So now you can see I've replicated that thing, and it, it looks great. It's perfect. Now the only difference is that in the case of the bottom floor here, there's an extra window next to the doorway right here. So let me go ahead and draw that real quick. So I'm going to make another guideline that's 2 foot 2 from the ground. I'm going to take it 9 inches away from the doorway like that. Four and a half feet tall by two feet wide. And I'll push that back like this. It's a little bit skinnier than the other windows, but there we go. Now let's talk a little bit about the master bedroom here. Now if we look at the master bedroom, that's this area right in here, this room right in here. In the photos, we can tell that the master bedroom actually has two levels. They're not two different stories, but there's one part of it that's raised up about eight inches higher than the rest. And that's going to affect where we place our windows. So we need to go ahead and 
modify it so that it is going to be that high in certain places. So let's go ahead and add a guideline. Coming from this side of the room over here, I'm gonna take a guideline out, and I'm gonna type in nine feet, 10 inches. All right, so there we go. That guideline is where the level starts. So this is where we want to split our room basically in two. So I'm gonna switch to the line tool, and I'm gonna draw a line over my guideline like that. Perfect, so now you can see I've got the rest of my house, all one level, but then I've got this, which is a separate chunk of floor. I'm gonna use the push-pull tool and pull it up eight inches, right? That is the level that I'm working with here. I can now use this as my new floor guideline for all my windows in here. So in fact, let's go ahead and add a window. So we're gonna be working with this wall back here, which you can see is on our raised level. So I'm gonna take a guideline from the bottom, which this is our floor, but it's an eight inch, that floor is eight inches higher than the rest of the floor in the house, so it's different. So we're gonna add a guideline for two foot six right there, and we'll take another guideline from the left side of the wall over here, we'll extend that out nine foot nine, and then we'll take a guideline from the top of the wall here, we'll just take that down 11 inches, like that. And then we just need one more guideline to complete the set. So we'll take a guideline from this line here, and we'll type out three foot eight, because that's how long our, uh, how wide our window is gonna be. And then you can see that rectangle we have drawn out here, that's how big our window is gonna be. So let's go ahead and start at one corner, go down to the other corner with the rectangle tool, and push that back like so. Hold on, there we go, perfect. Now, doorways, obviously, the bottom of the doorway needs to be flush with the floor. Now, in this case, let me add a guideline here real quick. Six inches. And we'll draw out a rectangle, and we'll make it two foot eight by six foot eight, just like all of our other doors. And then we'll push it back in like that. There we go. That looks great, right? And it is great, but that's because we have this extra riser here. If I were to push it back down the way it was, you can see that's what we would have needed to draw. So it's a lot easier to just have the riser there as it is. So like there you can see, normally we would just need to consciously think, okay, we got to shift everything up eight inches. Whereas this way, we've added the riser already. So now we can just measure from the riser up. So it's way easier to just do it that way. Now over here, this is one of the walls that we were working with quite a bit in our last episode, this kitchen wall where the sink and the dishwasher and a window are going to go. In the photo, we can see that it, the, the window is basically flush with the top of the countertops. All I need is a guideline three feet up like that. That's the top of our countertops. Once we model our countertops, that's where it'll be. So that's where this window is going to be. And then we just need a couple guidelines from the sides. One foot 10 from the left and eight inches from the right. And then we just need a guideline from the top, which is going to be two feet. So two feet from the top, down like that. Draw our rectangle. So we'll just push that through there. And there's our window there. Now there are a lot of windows and a lot of doorways in this house, so obviously I can't show you how to model every single one of them in this episode. It would be a six hour episode probably. So rather, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you the way it looks once we're done with it. You can see now we've got all the windows and all the doorways that we could possibly want in here. So you can see there's the garage that we started with. We've added doorways and windows here, all along here, got them over here. We have them everywhere. Now, don't worry about this because I'm going to put this model uh, with all the windows and everything on our website at www.harwoodpodcast.com. Look for the show notes for this episode, the Kawea Falls Windows and Doors episode, and then you'll be able to check out this model and look and see where all the final windows and doorways go. So if you wanted, you could have the two models, the final version and the version that you're working on up side by side, go back and forth between them. And this is gonna be great practice for you because you'll have to make measurements as to where the windows and doors are in the final model and then translate them over to your model that you're working on. So that's gonna give you a lot of practice working with this kind of making the guidelines and measurements, 
when making the windows and doors. It's going to give you a lot of practice, and that's very good. Experience really is one of the best ways to learn how to work with things in SketchUp. It'll start to feel really intuitive. Now, one other thing I did want to show you guys, just because I think it's fairly uh, amusing. When I was making the windows and doorways for my project that I was working on, I used guides a lot, obviously. Uh, but I didn't delete them as I went. Now, normally I would recommend you use the edit delete guides command to clear out your guides every now and then because it'll get pretty busy. But I wanted to show you guys how much you really do rely on guidelines uh, when you're working on this kind of stuff. This is my model uh, when I finished with all of my windows and doorways before I deleted my guidelines. Look at all these things. There's a ton of them. I didn't realize how much I had used them, to be perfectly honest. But you can see they're just everywhere. Going through the house, they're, they're all through the house, these little dotted lines. Every single window, every single doorway relied on them quite a bit. And there's a few extra details that I've added uh, for future episodes that we won't be getting into quite yet. But these things are absolutely everywhere. So do not be afraid of the tape measure tool. It is your friend. Make the guidelines and use them to help you create the windows and doorways and things should be going just great for you. Now, until next time, as I mentioned, be sure to visit our website at www.howardpodcast.com. Check out the show notes for this episode where you can download uh, the project with all the doors and windows modeled as well as the project as it was at the beginning of this episode. So if you haven't been following along with us, you can download the model and work just on the things that we worked on in this episode if you want to. Also, be sure to friend us up on Facebook at facebook.com slash Podcast, where you can get alerts every time we post a new show, as well as behind-the-scenes looks at the network, photos and vlogs and all kinds of great stuff we're doing. And as always, if you have any questions or comments for me about the show, you can send me an email at Cameron at HarwardPodcast.com. I love hearing from you guys. Until next time, I'll just say goodbye and good modeling.